Hello, good evening everyone. I said I'd make more videos, um, helpful videos for those wanting to get into 3D design. So today I need a real quick knob. So I need something that I can fit on a bolt, 3D printable knob, and we're going to do, not do the, the traditional going to thing ever is get an STL. Um, we're going to instead go to a CAD warehouse. So you see here, this is grabcad.com. It's a great website to have a account on because you can download direct files into Fusion 360, which is free to work on. So let's do that step by step. I'm going to jump in, go to GrabCAD. Uh, you're going to see all kinds of uh, CAD files here. This is great because they're not STLs. They're easier to work on. It cuts down the um, amount of work, and you can use parametric design right off the bat. So next step, uh, we're going to click on software, and I'm going to use Fusion 360 for this, but if you have SolidWorks, Autodesk, it's all options. And a lot of this can be converted, but let's just go straight to, if you saw that, Fusion 360. And in the search, I'm going to type in knob. Okay, if you saw, I already picked out the knob I liked. Uh, but you could scroll through and find a knob you like. Um, I don't remember where I found that one on which page, but it was, you can see, grab cat right there. Um, and we're, I'm going to edit this and make it... Uh, fit my needs, so I'm going to download, you can see it downloading here. If you don't have an account, it'll make you create an account or log in, but again, that account's free and it's great to have. So jumping into Fusion, uh, Fusion 360 is free, I'm going to put a link in the description, but you can use uh, this as a template. So I'm going to go to my data panel, I'm going to open that up, so it looks like this, like you're in your home screen. One great thing to have is a project that's just your building blocks, your bolts, nuts, things you keep on hand. So I'm going to double click that. I'm going to click my mechanical hardware. I'm going to go to handles and knobs. I just was setting this up today for this one. Um, so I don't see if you solid works in my career, but Fusion 360 is great for this. So let's go ahead and bring in that download. So first, I'm going to open up my files here. I'm going to go to my downloads. I'm going to find that one I just downloaded. I'm going to right click and say extract or I can open it. This is how I usually show people how to do it is grab the file, the Fusion 360 file. It'll say the one with F3D on it. I'm just going to drag it off to the side into the downloads. Hopefully that went in there. Yep, see now it's extracted from the folder. That's great. Let's go to upload, select files. We're going to grab that and open. So then it'll be here and I'm going to select upload. So once that completes, we'll be good to go. Let's just close this. Uh, while that's happening, you can see it's going to be an actual Fusion file, so that's great. So I'm going to double click it. And uh, if it was set up right, you can see we have a timeline. We can scroll back and forth in that timeline. Uh, find features, etc. But I'm going to show you the quick and dirty way of doing this. So a lot of times I'll go in here, click the last feature and the first feature, right click, put them in a group. So I can at least know like all these features were before me. That's great. Good enough. Go ahead and sort of slow. Okay. Uh, let me pause one second. Okay. Sorry about that. Hit call. So, um, yeah, we have the handles. You can see these are slide on. I don't want that. I just want to save the time of not doing the basic shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this symbol. I'm going to fill in this hole and then I'm going to put a bolt through it um, that will be flush and just things I keep in the shop, our bolts I keep in the shop. And so this will be something quick and easy. I can print a lot of them and not have to uh, go buy them. I just need one real, real quick today. So uh, first up, let's pick our bolt. We could clean it up, but let's pick our bolt. Uh, I'm going to go to mcmaster.com. Do you see this? Uh, I'm bad about not storing these, but I'm Fusion since I a lot of times use SolidWorks, but let's go ahead and sell mcmaster.com. We're going to pick a screw, or uh, we're going to pick bolt. I'm going to pick metric. I want it to be socket head type. I want it to be M4 because those are my, the size I need. I know outside the long ones I need to use this. And we're just going to pick any of them, really, uh, because of, I'll show you. So uh, 
I'm going to do 3D step, no threads. You could do 3D step, or um, the 3D step will have threads. 3D step, no threads, won't. And I'll show you why I'm doing that in a second. But let's also go ahead and grab our nut. See, it's downloading the file here. Let's grab a hex nut, again, metric, and four. Um, we're just going to grab a standard nut, and this one will do, and four. So, again, I'm going to do no threads for a specific reason in a second. That you'll see. Well, this one you can do threads, it doesn't matter too much. Um, and then, so, download. Now, let's jump back into Fusion. So, uh, let's move back in our folders. I'm going to go to mechanical hardware, bolts and nuts. Uh, I made these folders, remember, so you won't have them originally, but it's good to set these up. Uh, SolidWorks has a hardware feature that I don't have to do this, but anyway, so metric. I'm going to metric. I'm going to go to the bolts folder. We're going M4. Um, I already knew I didn't have any M4s. I don't have most of the metric ones, but again, doing it now, I won't have to go back to McMaster in the future. So I'm going to upload, select files, go to my downloads. I'm going to find the no threads, uh, one I just downloaded. I'm going to upload. Okay. While that's loading, I'll jump back to metric. I'll do nuts and upload. Well, looks like I do have an M4. Let me check. Oh, I just haven't sorted them. I believe that's going to be an M3. Uh, but let's go to upload, select all the files, 090, open. Upload. Okay. And see it. It's uh, one of the things I haven't taken the time for on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and sort it right now. And once it's done loading, we'll build bring it in. So while that's uploading, let's go ahead and hope oh, there it goes. Let me drag and right click, move. I'm going to move it to mechanical, bolts and nuts, metric, nuts, M4. Takes a lot of time the first time, but now again I won't have to go to McMaster and search. It'll always be here. Um, so let's drag that in. So I'm gonna Go in there. I'm just going to drag it over. And now you can see we've got a nut there. The only thing is, I want to use this as a template, so let's not do that. Let's start a brand new design. This will be our assembly design, so we don't change the original files. Okay, save. I'm going to save this actually as something. So let's save this as um, M4. Bolt knob assembly. Oops, I spelled that, I don't really care. Uh, I'm saving where I have this open, so we're going to need to move that. I'm going to go ahead and move it to my knobs folder, so mechanical hardware, handles and knobs, move. Okay, so this is the assembly. Let's go ahead and drag and drop the nut over. Okay, now we have that in the assembly. Let's go grab our bolt, since that's the closest thing. It was an M4. Drag and drop that over. And you can see now why I did no threads, uh, because it gives me the ability not to worry about this length, because I can just extrude it out. So I'll just delete this. Delete. OK, that's not going to let me do that. So let me create a sketch. I'll type C for sketch. I'm going to type P for project. That's the surface, enter, finish sketch up here, and extrude. And now you can see I'm making this, um, oops, not that face. I want that circle. So now you can see I can make this bolt the length I need it um, quickly because it doesn't matter again. So that's what I'm going to do there. So shrink this. So we got our bolt, we got our nut. Let's go grab the knob. But before we get the knob in there, we need to edit it because we want to keep this in the future as a reference. So I'm going to go into the Prusa knob. I'm going to get rid of that nut. I'm going to delete that out. It's hard if I'm going fast. I'm actually working right now, so I'm just trying to get this uh, printing. So what I could do, I could go in and find, like you see I clicked that, and I can see those hash marks above this. That's telling me that it's in this folder. So if I click again, 
we'll see that saves through. I could go in, find all of these, suppress them like that. Control Z if I got one back. Or you can do it the manual way and just start uh, when Wave Fusion will let you do it lazily. If you just start deleting, find what it will let you delete. Just keep going. And eventually, same result. So it's kind of your personal preference. It adds a few delete things to your timeline, but again, it's up to you. I just kind of like do it that way so I can always roll back. Um, but personal preference. Okay, so same with this. I can go in and find these and turn them off, which you see the hash marks. I can select that. Uh, select them again. Where's that feature? You can see I can't find it unless it's that one, so I'm just going to type delete. So that's great. We're done. We have a blank template knob. Okay. Now let's um, add a hole because I want this bolt to go through it. So you can see I can't select the center mark here, so we're going to need to add a sketch point. So I'm going to type on this. I'm going to type C for create, and then I'm going to type P for project. Okay. Now I do have a center point there, so I can finish this sketch if you want. If you want to be high achiever, you can go over here and name your sketch as like um, bolt, bolt, ref, rex, point, for large knob. In case future years working on it, but again, I'm just going to run through this. So I clicked hole, and we have the hole tool. I'm going to do um, add a point and select that center point. You can see it's creating a special shaped hole because I want it a special way. So um, for the shape setting, I'm going to select counter bore. I'm going to do all for distance, so it'll go all the way through. And let's go see what size we need to make this. So a great thing about making master, if we pull that back up over here, you can go to product detail and select, you see we're seeing the nut detail, let's go ahead and um, download a PDF of that for us to have, you can put the PDF also in your folders on Fusion to have as a reference, um, I'll do that after the video because I don't want to take too much time with hell here, so socket head screws, just metric, again this is where it'd save you time if you're not having to look up this document, so socket, um, we want for the size, and I just know any of these are going to work. Product detail. That's a 3D print part, so it's not super critical. So I can select this PDF. Um, I need a 5.5 millimeter diameter head, a 3 millimeter diameter depth head, or not diameter, depth on the head, and 3 millimeter shaft. So 3, 3, 5.5. Shrink that down. So here's the drawing. We need this dimension here to be larger than we need. Actually, I'm going to make it the same size. I'm going to use a use a soldering iron to heat it and shrink it in there just for a little bit more extra. So I'll do like 3.1 millimeters, a little bit bigger. Oh, sorry. Uh, that one's 5.5, so I'm going to make it 5.65 millimeters, a little bit bigger. And if it gives me some pushback, I'll melt it in there. Um, for the depth, it was 3 millimeters, so let's do 3.5 millimeters, so it's a little bit recessed. All right, and for this, the diameter of the bolt going through is three, so let's do it. Really, could do four, so it's a little bit bigger than you need. But I'm gonna do 3.5 again millimeters. I do want it to be larger though, um, but that's good enough. Okay, so now our that'll fit. Control Save Enter. Now let's jump back to the the assembly. So in the assembly, we're gonna drag and drop this in here. Oops, grab the wrong. So that um, we're not editing the original part of the knob. So we can use that in the future as a template, but I want to make an assembly. So I'm going to click to move it. Sure. Okay. Let me get rid of this one for now. So I clicked it so I can find where it is. Bodies is still highlighted. Highlighted here. So it's this one. So this body here is the one we want to start working on. Whatever that is. Oh, it's a logo. Okay. We can also turn off the sketch. So, all right. So here's that tiny little bolt. It is looking completely wrong. Did I grab one that's wrong? Let's go back and look. Should be grabbing an M4 bolt. What is this? 
this is M3. Ah, so I messed that up. Y'all probably saw me did that in there. That's right, we're moving. So let's grab a. Alright, here's one. I know I'm gonna want an M30. I wasn't gonna get the exact ones, I can show y'all some tricks, but this video's taking longer than I thought. If this takes over 30 minutes, it would have been worth to order it. I'll do no threads. I'll show you what threads look like on this one. Uh, so step download. I'll just upload it here and then I'll move it. Oops. Um, select file, so I'll have to jump through the folders. Open. Upload. Close. Let's go ahead and get rid of this one. I'm going to delete it. It won't delete it from my files. It'll just delete it from this assembly. Okay, first up is cutting the hole in this one. I want to add this hex. Um, I'll go ahead and edit this here. So let's create, or let's go ahead and, yeah, let's back out to the part. Sorry, I'm jumping back and forth. I'm trying to not do that much. But I typed on the bottom face, I clicked on it, and now I typed C for create. I'm going to then go to create, and I'm going to find a polygon. Missing that? Yeah, there they are. Polygon. So I do an inscribe one. Doesn't matter too much. I can just click anywhere. Okay, now I just gotta push D for diameter or uh, dimension. Just like that. Now let's go figure out how big that um, nut needs to be. I think I downloaded that a second ago. Yes. So let's also upload that here. Select files. It should be a PDF of the nut. Open that, upload it. Again, I'll move this later. Um, but now we'll have that in the nut folder. I'll sort these after I'm done, so I'm going to double click it. It has opened up over here. It's a good way to have the reference material there very quickly. It's not as big of an issue on SolidWorks, but Fusion, to be fast, you got to do that. So we need 7 millimeters. That's the side to side reference. So let's go with 7.25 millimeters, a little bit bigger. Look, contraction for 3D branching up and we want to fit. Maybe I'll do exactly 7 and I'll melt it in there. Yeah, let's do exactly 7, try that out. Um, give the number enough to secure it as much. It's 7.1. I know it's going to still be tight. Okay, finish that. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude it. I could have done this in the other one, but I think I'd have to break the link. kind of wish I had now, but cool. How thick was this? 3.2 millimeters, so let's make it at least 4. So negative 4 millimeters there. And what do we have? Yep, that looks good to me. I'm going to control S or save, press enter. you got to do control S save because now it's going to update here. So we, we'll see where we're needing an update. Click that icon, and we've updated. Now it's here. So that's great. I'm going to type J for joint. And we're going to go to the nut. So I'm going to, while I'm on the face here that I want, I'm going to hold control. That'll allow me to not jump around too much. And it'll help me out. So I'm going to go on this face, hold control, and hover over the middle. And I guess I'd already selected one face. I'll go back to the next snap, and I'll go down here, hold control, grab that center. Oh no, it's doing that thing. I think it's going to be this one. That looks pretty close. Let's try the other one just to be to check. It doesn't happen too often. It must not have been centered. Doesn't matter for this application. Okay, yeah, that looks good. If you wanted, you could make this a little bit funner. Do a slider. That'll work for me. I'm gonna go to that joint and my joints folder, slider, and I'm gonna set a minimum. Let's see what it does now. So that works. Um, that's just to help you. Okay, let me double click this, right click, and say ground. Now I'll be able to move this in and out, and it'll look um, like this simply works. Okie dokie. Did we download a 4 millimeter by 30? Yep, we did. So let's drag it over. And we can move it around if we want it, but it's not going to matter, so I'm just going to click OK. I'm going to go under it. See, this one has threads. 
um, but it doesn't allow me just to as easily extrude it, and it's more complex. If you're using hundreds in an assembly, go unthread it. Um, so I'm going to type J for joint, do the same thing with this one, grab the middle point on that face. Um, I use the lower face on this one so it would um, align with this face. So, same thing. And you can see I must have used a 3mm on that as well. I'm going to go to motion, slider, okay. Same with this slider, I'm going to do minimum and test it with animate. That looks good. And you could name them if you want, like bolt for future reference. If you're doing a lot, then it's necessary. Okay, so you can see here I've definitely messed that up. I must use a 3mm, so let's type I for inspect. Uh, and touch this face. You can see that it is a 0.276 inch diameter. So I'm going to close. And you know what I'll do? I will go into the original file, bolt hole reference point. I know this one is the hex nut, or hex cut on face. I'll turn that on. I'm going to right click it and do. Um, show dimension. Okay, 7.1. Let's do uh, 0.276, I think it was. Go back. Uh, type I for inspect. Touch that. 0.276. Okay, I think that's what I said. Um, let's go with. Ah, that was the wrong one. That's wrong sketch. Sorry, it's um, rushing, but I'm going to right click here and type show dimension. Okay, we didn't draw a circle. <laughs> so, oh, because we use the whole tool. All right, we're gonna go to, I'm gonna sh shrink this down, I'm gonna grab the whole tool I just used. Easier than that, so I'm gonna go to these diameter, 0.276, let's just go 0.3. I'm not gonna think about it. Uh, I'm sure this is in inches, because our document's in millimeters, so that, that'll work. And I'm noticing that hole is probably the wrong size as well. Let's go check that. Um, this one's going to be harder. I'm betting it's right at four. Uh, yeah, see, that's another problem with type I for inspect. I'm going to grab there. Um, radius 0. Point, or diameter 0. 0.157. We can go to secondary units, go to millimeters. Diameter 4 millimeters. Yeah, so. A bolt, 4mm bolt is 4mm diameter shaft. Okay, easy peasy. Let's go back to the hole feature. And kind of wishing I'd done this as an assembly uh, feature, but we're going to do, uh, let's do 4.1 millimeters center. And I'm not sure if that changed it. Let's type, double click the hole feature. Yep, it didn't. Ta oh, yeah, it did. Okay. And now we need the head depth, of course. <laughs> so we're going to go back, type I, I'll select this face, not that edge, escape, escape, type I for inspect, select that face, select this face. We can see that is 4 millimeter depth. We're going to jump back. This should have been an assembly feature now that I'm doing this. Um, so I'm going to go with 5 millimeters on the head depth dimension. Okay. That looks good. Uh, control S for save, type enter, so it'll update here. And we're going to update this assembly, okay. and we're good to go. So, let's make sure no errors occurred. Yep, there's one right there. So we'll click that, see what is the problem. We'll close. This is, it looks like the sketch that was on the old bolt. So you know what, let's delete this. And we do delete, we don't need that. Um, turn off joints, and yeah, that looks good to me. Let's check. Uh, one thing you can do is go to inspect, section analysis, I'm gonna select this face just to be easy, and we'll go in and carve that away and look at it. So yeah, it fits good. It's got plenty of distance. The threads aren't interacting with the sides. Might want to make that a little bit bigger. I did 4.1. Let's go ahead and do it just to make sure like 4.5. It's not like we need that extra bit. Um, you know, 3D print shrink, but I like we need that um, to be very precise. We just need extra room. So let's go 4.5 millimeter. Okay. Control save or control S. 
and jump back. Okay, so we're back. Uh, let's update it, and we'll gain some space on that hole. Yep, that looks way better. Cool, we are good to go. Um, I'm gonna turn off analysis, and now we have a nice knob that we can use. Uh, of course, I'm gonna melt this in there, and we'll be golden. Sorry these videos take long, so long, and sorry I talk quiet when I make them. My wife and I share a office, and I just try to make them quickly when I have a chance, but, uh, so about, yeah, so I said if this takes me more than 20, 30 minutes, then it'd be worth just ordering them, but again, now I'll have this forever, every project, if I run out of them, I'll print, you know, 10 or 20 at a time, store them all in a drawer, um, so this actually turned out profitable as far as, like, future projects, long term, having a template like this, because now in the future, I will go to this, I'll open it up, and I'll just change the whole feature to fit a five millimeter, a six millimeter, a 10 millimeter. Um, and then I'll save that version as like an assembly. So uh, right now I could go in and break this link. So like here's the file, I could go in and break this link, um, say either one, capture position. And now when I update the knob file, it won't update this knob. So this knob is like this forever now, and it's a great way to, um, you know, save a lot of versions of something. So, cool. Hope that was helpful. Let me know if these videos help at all, and um, hopefully tonight or tomorrow I'm going to make the video on the enclosure. So we'll be making a template for um, electrical enclosures for maker projects. So, okay. Thanks. Bye.